Good morning. This is Bob McElvain, your host this morning for Renewable Energy uh, webinar <clears throat> focused on IIoT and, and remote O&M. The um, last year saw global renewable energy generation capacity increase by 161 gigawatts, 161,000 megawatts. So <clears throat> this brings the total capacity up to over 2 uh, million uh, megawatts, 2,000 gigawatts, and uh, solar was the big, biggest contributor, and wind uh, uh, grew by 51 uh, gigawatts, and hydropower by 30 gigawatts, and bioenergy by nine. Those numbers that we're looking at in uh, gigawatts of capacity uh, tell the picture in terms of capital investment. They don't tell the picture uh, well at all in terms of megawatt hours of additional electrical generation uh, are added. And the reason being that compared to uh, coal-fired power, which shoots for 85, 90% uh, 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 capacity uh, on a continuous basis, the all these renewables are down at some much lower percentage. So a coal-fired capacity in the world uh, added about 70 gigawatts, but it's actually uh, more uh, generation uh, capacity in megawatt hours than all the renewables. So uh, this is kind of a sobering thought uh, when you start looking at megawatt hours versus total capacity. Wind and solar are now cost competitive but it's very site specific. Now this is the U.S. and uh, coal is relatively cheap in the U.S. But the siting problems uh, for a new coal-fired plant are impossible. So the cost per megawatt hour to run a new coal plant in the United States is uh, different than it might be in Vietnam just because of all these obstacles. Uh, natural gas is very relatively cheap in the United States. It's very expensive uh, where you have to import LNG in, in many of the uh, countries of the world. Unsubsidized onshore wind uh, can be very inexpensive or it can be expensive depending on the wind conditions. The um, unsubsidized solar uh, it would be uh, similar in terms of the site-specific uh, conditions. Nuclear is expensive uh, by any uh, calculation. And the emphasis on nuclear throughout, throughout the world is uh, on its way down with uh, some countries outlying new nuclear capacity. The largest uh, wind turbine operators around the world are mostly Chinese. The top 25 of them own 41% of the global cumulative, cumulative wind power capacity. Uh, last year, uh, a, uh, in terms of their uh, total capacity compared to the rest, it was down slightly, but obviously the total numbers were up, were up. With an average capacity addition of more than one gigawatts, the top 15 asset owners of the Chinese market set a new record in, in 2015. Eight owners in China are now in the, in the global top 25 ranking, and now seven of the top 10 uh, global asset owners are based in China, with China Guodian in first place and state-owned utility Huanang in place number three. Second place is the Spanish utility Iberdrola. There's a, a monumental change going on in China that's certainly going to shape the wind, solar, coal, and all the other power generation markets. What's happening is that the Chinese government wants to make these companies more efficient, so they're encouraging mergers. And the top wind power company, Guodian, uh, is merging with Shenhua, who's the top coal miner, and also a major, both of them are major 
coal-fired power generators. So with assets of $271 billion, the new entity will be the world's second largest, biggest company, period, by revenue and largest by installed uh, electrical capacity. Uh, the new company will have installed capacity of over 225 gigawatts, topping EDF and NL. And in terms of uh, generation of megawatt hours, most of that is, is coal, so it's a lot of, gener of, of megawatt hours. <clears throat> Bodian is the largest wind farm owner with 32 gigawatts of wind capacity or 14% of the total for the combined uh, company. Coal costs for 77%, solar 1% and hydro 8%. The merged entity will account for 13% of both China's power generating and coal mining capacity. The ultimate goal is to form bigger energy companies that can hedge against market risks between coal and power. China Wenang, uh, the com country's lar uh, biggest coal-fired power producer and the world's third largest wind energy producer, may merge with State Power Investment Company, which also owns State Nuclear Power Technology Corporation. So these are major changes, and the uh, Chinese, uh, with a very large percentage of the world's population, and uh, uh, certainly a, a great need for uh, generating capacity are helping to shape the markets. In the so the American market is becoming uh, more concentrated and BHE is uh, leading the way. Uh, the progress of wind energy, I think, is signified by the fact that BHE Mid-American is shooting for 100% uh, wind power generation of all the electricity in Iowa, and they're already getting, uh, you know, very close to that number. So that is a, a major achievement, and uh, Berkshire Hathaway and Warren Buffett are uh, very big on the renewables uh, end of it. But the company is also a major uh, producer, uh, a generator of uh, coal-fired uh, power as well. So the uh, the uh, average compound growth uh, in uh, of China-based uh, owners was 29% uh, over a period of a few years compared to 21% for owners based in uh, the Americas. Uh, the consolidation of the U.S. market has been uh, driven by volatile policy environment and the rapid rise of yield companies uh, formed to own operating assets. Uh, so that's another uh, complexity here. BHE, which was 14 globally in uh, wind power, is increasing its market share, as we're going to show you in some slides that we'll be presenting uh, soon, uh, later in the, in the slide presentation here. Uh, we track all the wind power projects in our 311 Renewable Energies Update and Projects. Uh, we, do, we track all the coal-fired power plants uh, in utility tracking. And we are uh, tracking uh, the IIoT and remote O&M activities of chemical and pharmaceutical and oil and gas companies and many others and others of our services. Uh, profiles and analysis of the top global 50 uh, renewables uh, generators are included in our NO42 renewable gener uh, energy world markets. Now we forecast the guide, which is the uh, software and services control and the measure, all the instrumentation for wind, solar, and other renewables uh, in our NO31 industrial IIoT and remote O&M. Offshore wind has a special place and it could be uh, much, much bigger in the future. Europe is is the leading area for offshore wind, and there is 11,000 megawatts of of installed capacity as of the end of 2015. And obviously, the wind is stronger. There are fewer concerns about uh, visibility and interruption of uh, activities of uh, the population if you put it offshore, 
the cost goes up considerably with each mile offshore that you place these uh, systems. But in terms of IOT and remote O&M, these uh, remote facilities uh, dictate remote operation. EON has been a major player uh, in the uh, offshore wind. Uh, in the U.S., as we mentioned a little bit earlier, 40% uh, of the wind contracts were signed by corporate power users along with universities and military customers. So uh, really at, accounting for almost 10% of the, of the uh, market. Now, these, uh, these, for, these deals take many forms, but most are so-called power purchase agreements. And essentially, uh, they are agreements uh, between the uh, individual uh, uh, consumer of the electricity and the wind or solar uh, producer, but he has actually, uh, the generation actually goes into the grid, so you have the most reliable source uh, of power for the, for the owner. And uh, the owners are the large uh, electricity consumers. Now, this brings up uh, another point that I think is worth spending a little time on, which is a distributed generation is what GE says is going to be the future, that they visualize a time when most of the power is generated and consumed in a, a very uh, narrow local area. And you're no longer going to see big thousand megawatt gas or coal-fired plants. Um, but that's not to say that uh, renewable energy will necessarily uh, dominate this market. In fact, uh, GE and a number of the other uh, manufacturers of, of gas engines and turbines are basically saying that there's a huge opportunity uh, for gas engines in this marketplace and the reason being that you have emergency power requirements for for instance uh, uh, all, all your uh, computerized uh, networks and you might have a 400 megawatt uh, requirement uh, uh, for uh, an Amazon or one of the other uh, big players and you need that backup power to keep the uh, all the computers running and the servers and so forth. But by putting the air pollution control equipment on those uh, emergency gas engines, and there might be like 200 one megawatt engines at one, one of these uh, places, you are uh, providing uh, potentially uh, a, uh, an opportunity for additional power. And so it, if these units were to operate in, as standby power rather than emergency power, there would be a huge increase in generation requirements and a lot of that would be uh, gas driven. The other aspect of that is that these gas driven generators produce CO2 and a big market is looming uh, for the combined heat, power, and CO2 for greenhouse gases, like for, for greenhouses. Uh, Shell, for instance, supplies CO2 to 550 greenhouses in the Netherlands. Uh, the CO2 makes the plants grow 40% faster than uh, without the, the 600 parts per million of CO2. In other words, at 400 parts per million, they grow at one rate. At 600 parts per million, they grow 40% faster. And the potential is huge. The Empire State Building alone could grow enough wheat to feed all of Manhattan. So this is a, uh, a competing set of technologies. Also from uh, the greenhouse gas standpoint, the um, there is the observation by uh, a, cons a consortium of universities 
that are using the satellite uh, in, uh, data to indicate that the world is somewhat greener now than it was 20 years ago. And the additional even 40 or 50 parts per million of CO2 in the atmosphere is what they th at least think is the reason for the additional greening of the, of the country, of the world. So these are all uh, considerations that uh, down, down the line may, may or may not uh, prove to change some of our views about uh, global warming. I, I personally was involved in the acid rain program from uh, day one and testified before Senate subcommittees about, about acid rain and was involved with the boiler companies in putting in the scrubber systems, uh, which we thought were uh, mainly to keep the trees in the forest from dying. Uh, it turns out it was a very good move, but 15, 20 years later, it turns out it wasn't the acid rain, which actually, uh, in many cases, actually makes uh, as needed the, the sulfur is needed in the, for the plants, but it was the SO2 uh, reacting with ammonia and other um, uh, basics elements in the uh, floating around in the atmosphere to produce these very fine particles, which uh, were the, the serious uh, reason to take out the SO2. So the science that uh, we talk about as being uh, uh, complete and accurate is not necessarily that, that way. And I think you just have to uh, factor that in over time. Almost 55 uh, gigawatts of wind power capacity was added in 2016. And so the total capacity is nearly 487 gigawatts. And China it led the way in new installations, uh, despite the market demand being uh, uh, mediocre. Asia uh, represented about half the added capacity. Uh, but con con contrast to the coal-fired power, where it's more than 80% of the new coal-fired capacity was in Asia. But uh, there was activity in more than 90 countries. Looking at from the supplier standpoint, Vestas is number one, GE is number two, and Goldwyn uh, is number three. But it did have a tremendous year in China and outpaced the next closest OEM in China by more than 4.5 gigawatts as no other Chinese turbine OEM installed more than two gigawatts in 2016. A Siemens f fell to fifth spot globally, but it is pretty heavily, it is a leader in the offshore uh, wind. Let's talk for a minute uh, about the renewable energy uh, IIoT and remote O&M. Duke Energy's Renewable Control Center in Charlotte uses uh, powerful and secure technology to monitor wind and solar plants across the country. Duke entered the wind power business in 2007 and launched its commercial solar business in 2009. The center provides critical monitoring services not only for all of Duke Energy Renewables operating assets, uh, which total about 3,000 megawatts, but it also offers monitoring and on-the-ground operation and maintenance services to third-party renewable operators through uh, Duke Energy Renewable Services. So customers who contract with this uh, renewable service get all the benefits of all the knowledge that, uh, that Duke has. So in terms of the broader market for IIoT and, and, and remote O&M, the wind uh, and solar is a good example of where we are moving even faster to the remote monitoring for a number of different reasons. One of the interesting things about Duke is that not too long ago, they were relying on Vestas and GE and the other suppliers of the wind power to Duke to provide this data separately. So they were having to interpret data that was somewhat differently prepared and displayed from a number of different wind and, and solar vendors. 
uh, they contracted uh, for uh, with a, a process management company, and now all that data is uh, compiled, and data analytics uh, uh, are standardized for all the operations. And so Duke believes it has even better information than Vestas or GE on the operation of all these uh, turbines. Solar PV growth was 75 gigawatts, and uh, so that the capacity was up tremendously in uh, 2015, and it's up to about 303 gigawatts. The top five markets were China, United States, Japan, India, and the United Kingdom, and they accounted for about 85% of the additions. In terms of Cumulative capacity, the top countries are China, Japan, and the United States. Italy is a distant fifth. So, but on a per, uh, a per person basis, uh, Germany, Japan, Italy, Belgium, and Australia are the leaders. The first solar is the leading PV developer uh, here in the United States. Solar PV IoT ecosystem uh, can be described in terms of the hardware, on-site measure of radiation and weather, monitoring systems which keep track of uh, every single component and the entire plant performance, smart meters to measure energy yields at the grid connection, or if necessary, behind every inverter. Closed circuit TV systems provide on-site visibility. Servers ensure the flow of data to the monitoring solution provider and the OEM specialist. From here, the uh, data is made available to the asset manager and the owner through easily understandable web porters and de detailed reports. Uh, these SCADA systems are really just part of the picture uh, these uh, process management cloud-based systems offer the opportunity for data to be uh, available to the component suppliers as as well as the owners uh, so the iiot it can be used to optimize the micro grid uh, as faith technologies in partnership with schneider electric is going to demonstrate by building the largest, most advanced microgrid in the Midwest to um, power a nature preserve, and it uses a combination of uh, renewable energies. The remote centers uh, allow for, have many advantages, and the uh, one of which we believe is underutilized which is called the, the practice matter experts or wisdom, but we believe that a lot more cultivation of these niche experts is, is needed. Concentrating uh, solar thermal power saw 110 megawatts of capacity come online in 2016, uh, and the global capacity is about 4.8 gigawatts. It's not a large amount, but it does require a lot of combust flow and treat uh, analyzers and pumps and valves and filters. And it's a very tough environment with the corrosive geothermal uh, situation that you, you run into. The uh, uh, South Africa led the market in new additions uh, in 2016 and followed by China. The uh, uh, Japan has the largest reserves, but these are the hot springs that uh, are sacred, and so the, uh, they are un underdeployed in terms of uh, the use of them. So uh, there are a number of companies like LT Solar that design and, and deploy SCADA systems for controlling and operating solar farms. Global hydropower capacity issues in 2016 were about 25 gigawatts. And so you've got a, a, over a, a million uh, a megawatts or 1,000 gigawatts uh, now in operation. Uh, China, Brazil, and the US are the largest uh, 
producers of uh, hydropower genera uh, gen electricity generation. <clears throat> GE is involved in, uh, in um, hydropower along with every other kind of power generation. And it's got the digital hydro plant, uh, which is a unique blend of hydropower software and hard hardware based on data analytics to improve the performance of the hydro plant, uh, actionable insights from the data, and a way, obviously, to increase profits. The uh, intelligent condition monitoring system is ob obviously an important part of all that as well. And of course, you've got the big uh, turbines and other uh, rotating equipment in a hydropower plant. Global bio power capacity increased uh, an estimated 6% in 2016 to 112 gigawatts. Uh, the leading uh, country uh, for biomass was the United States, followed by China and Germany, uh, Japan, India, and the United Kingdom. This doesn't include waste to energy, and the waste to energy market is booming as a way to get rid of your garbage more than as a way to uh, generate a, a non-fossil uh, uh, CO2 generating uh, power. Uh, uh, geothermal uh, plants are, are growing, but uh, at a relatively slow level with uh, an estimated total capacity of 13.5 gigawatts by uh, 2016. The United States has about 3.6 gigawatts of hydropower compared to the Philippines with 1.9. And that is a place, for instance, where BHE Energy uh, Renewables is, is working. They have some of that uh, 1.9 gigawatt capacity in the Philippines. Yokogawa is very active in the providing uh, monitoring systems for geothermal as well as every other type of uh, power. And they're working with the Microsoft Azure IoT suite and using cloud-based IoT architecture. And they have a uh, uh, unit in Indonesia controlling the Garut uh, power station. It's been operating for more than 30 years. And the uh, they monitor and control, for instance, Unit 5 steam turbine and auxiliary features with the Centum VP integrated production uh, control system. Emerson uh, systems is applied to germ uh, geothermal plants. Uh, in many, uh, many areas with the Ovation control system, uh, which has been applied on a variety of types of germ geothermal plants. And the philosophy is integrating a high level of process automation to ensure consistent operation and result in the fewest number of outages and extending the maintenance cycles. We uh, are tracking all the major IIoT and uh, remote O&M uh, op, uh, operators who are using the, these technologies. And this includes a number in the power industry, but also uh, chemical, semiconductor, pharmaceutical, and other industries that uh, are embracing IIoT and remote O&M. And specifically around the those process uh, companies or pro process uh, industries that uh, use combust flow and treat uh, components. Uh, we also uh, so we're providing profiles, 15, 20 page profiles of all these 550 companies. We have taken it to the next level, which is a complete decision system uh, for one company, which is BHE. And this has the alerts, answers, analysis, and advancement components that are desirable 
to maximize uh, the decision making to, to get your total lowest cost of ownership. Uh, this included, uh, has included, it's an ongoing uh, system that we're providing. And this uh, includes nine hours of webinars that were conducted uh, just on one NOx reduction issue. And this resulted in uh, what the plant personnel uh, labeled as wise crowd decisions. And the ultimate solution involves uh, combustion optimization, some unique use of chemicals, and a, a number of uh, other innovations that uh, wouldn't have come from just one vendor. So BHE is uh, spreading out. They uh, have they own Mid American. They in the Iowa type area. They own Pacific Corp. Nevada Power. They have bought uh, two gas pipelines. So they have lots of, uh, of needs for. Uh, I, 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 IOT and remote O&M. Their uh, revenue generation is not only in the United States, but they have uh, small amounts of it uh, in the United Kingdom uh, as, as well. And the uh, Mid-American group that you see uh, listed is one of, the, one of their major uh, uh, generating uh, areas or uh, subsidiaries but Pacific Corp and Nevada Power and Sierra Pacific Power are the others, as well as BHE uh, Renewables. And they're fairly diversified, uh, but they're moving more toward the wind and, and renewables, as you can see uh, from these slides as well. And they're making major wind and solar investments. The, uh, there's substantial cash uh, uh, is going into capital expenditures in the renewables area. And here are their plans uh, based on what they're going to be spending uh, at each of the subsidiaries. They're the largest wind uh, turbine operator in the U.S. And, is in, and they are in the midst of a $3.6 billion investment that will involve 1,000 more turbines on top of the 2020 it already has in Iowa. When it is done, the utility share of its energy that comes from renewable sources will catapult from 55% to nearly 90%. Now that's just mid-American, that's not the parent corporation. But already the utility craves more, looking to get 100% of its energy from renewable sources, such as wind. So this is where Iowa will be 100% wind. It would take about 2 billion and 550 turbines more to bring mid-American close to the 100% uh, uh, goal, uh, according to Bill Fer uh, Fairman, who's the CEO of mid-American and has led uh, Berkshire Hathaway uh, subsidiary in the march to renewable energy. Now, when uh, repowering is another uh, opportunity that um, with uh, longer rotors, upgraded gearboxes and controls, can uh, make a substantial be uh, a very um, good re return on an investment, and so there's 424 megawatts of of um, of those underway uh, uh, in uh, at BHE in, in the wind repowering. Uh, the environment plays a big role in all these subsidiaries, and this goes into some of the environmental activities at BHE. Uh, a little bit more on their power generation uh, distribution and uh, how much of BHE renewables, which is uh, not restricted really uh, geographically and is operating in many, many states and then uh, overseas as, as well. And the, these are uh, some updates on some of the BHE renewables uh, uh, activities uh, in our decision system for BHE, we have details on every one of the plants. Uh, Uptake Technologies has signed two wind power uh, 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 contracts for two wind power businesses owned by uh, Berkshire Hathaway. So for Mid-American and BHE Renewables. And so it will be uh, uh, providing the data analytics to help uh, monitor the problems and quickly improve performance. 
at the renewables activities of these two subsidiaries. So let's get into the control and instrumentation. The ABB uh, provides their uh, Symphony Plus for wind and its scalable, completely uh, automatic solution for operators and owners of not only small, but large power plants as uh, well. Luft and other OTT HydroMed companies are supplying renewables instrumentation. Uh, they're providing uh, accurate wind sensors uh, for wind and uh, sensors also for uh, the solar systems as well. Uh, wind turbine condition monitoring is extremely important, as we'll see in a little bit, bit here on, because of a lot of the problems. And the uh, certainly reducing uh, operation and maintenance costs and imp improving reliability have become top priorities in wind turbine maintenance strategies. In addition to the development of more highly in evolved wind turbine designs intended to improve availability, the application of reliable and cost-effective condition monitoring techniques offers an efficient approach to achieve this goal. State-of-the-art methods for determining the maintenance strategy uh, our reliability-centered uh, maintenance, RCM, which consists of preventive maintenance based on performance and or parameter monitoring and subsequent actions. In this strategy, condition monitoring is used to determine the optimum point between corrective and scheduled maintenance strategies. <clears throat> GE Bentley Nevada is a major player in measuring wind turbine vibration, and that uh, system can be incorporated incorporated into the pulse point monitoring service. And of course, uh, GE Bent is uh, Bentley obviously can integrate with Predix and the other uh, GE systems. B and J vibro monitors. Uh, 7,000 wind turbines uh, around the world. And they have a, uh, um, a system that really includes the um, instrumentation, but also reliable fault diagnostics and turnkey condition monitoring solutions. And they're tailored to specific customer needs. National Instruments uh, provides uh, analysis of vibrations. They uh, believe that a high resolution spectrum analyzer gives you a, a, a much better tool to, to make these measurements. A DNV in the Netherlands has a test facility of, for renewable energy control hardware. And I'd like to spend a little time on the uh, NREL here in the uh, US. And uh, they have a number of initiatives going uh, with the DOE money and an investment from uh, 25 partners uh, relative to condition monitoring and operation and maintenance search on uh, gearboxes. These, uh, this um, also includes assets represented by owner operators of about 40% of US capacity. And the data records are being uh, expanded, but are covering the gearboxes and generators for a substantial number of US plants. We're gonna prevent a few, let's present a few slides that are a combination from some of their more recent updates in the last few months and some that were uh, presented in 2016. But the filters used uh, in the cooling and lubrication are critical and filter testing is now complete one, uh, six uh, units. There have been a number of publications and presentations that are available to you and I certainly recommend their site. The uh, research needs that they identify 
they point uh, that most of uh, the turbines around the world are actually out of warranty. Uh, so the plants are on their own to make the uh, uh, needed changes. A 1% performance improvement could generate 1.2 billion in additional revenue with a 30% capacity factor. Uh, that 370 is up now, so that number is even larger. There's extremely high replacement costs for most subsystems. So the O&M reduction in business opportunities uh, would include uh, uh, a reduction in 21% of the life cycle cost for offshore plants and 11% for land-based plants. <clears throat> Further re uh, reductions are achievable by improved O&M practices. And NREL pegs the uh, market uh, for global O&M and renewables at 20 billion by 2023. The bottom line on the failures is bearings represent 76% of the uh, failures, gears 17%, and lubrication and filtration systems 6.6 uh, .6 with the housings included in that category as well. A gearbox reliability is causing the longest uh, and most outages. And then the uh, generator and blades uh, are the next two in line. So the gear gearboxes is a big focus for improvement. And they have been being improved over the years, as you can see a huge improvement in gearbox uh, reliability. The condition monitoring in O&M is being uh, identified, problems and solutions being identified, and there's the NREL website uh, that pursues uh, the, uh, that has a lot of good data on this as well. So performance and condition monitoring data analysis are two tools to achieve fault diagnosis. diagnosis and the remaining useful life uh, prognosis. Immediate impacts on O&M actions leading to improved turbine availability and indirect measure of reliability are, are one of the goals here. And then determine root cause analysis if conducted and addressed that can lead to direct improvement in component reliability. So the maintenance uh, for uh, mission critical subsystems is graphed here. HIDAC is one of the partners for the compact uh, filter uh, field testing. And at the time this slide was made, there were six X sets installed at a wind farm in Texas. Now all six sets uh, have been uh, uh, piloted and there are new there's new information available so they did find another partner to test the four remaining compact uh, filters HIDAC is uh, one of the participants in that and they provide filters pumps and condition monitoring for <clears throat> wind turbine uh, lubrication and cooling systems So here are all the components that uh, that they have in one of these systems. Uh, the filtration group is one of the other filter suppliers, and they have a two-stage system. And one of the things to note here is there's a lot of sophistication in these uh, filter designs. So for instance, in this one, there's a progressive structure. So the degree of fineness of the glass fiber material decreases from the inside to the outside, combining the advantages of a depth filter with those of a large effective filtering service. surface. The result is greater dirt pickup capacity, even at lower pressure loss. And so this means a, uh, a lot of R&D to find just the right uh, fiber uh, choices 
and then of course to support it as they're talking about here as as well. Parker Hannafin uh, supplies uh, many of the components that are needed in the uh, lubrication and filtration uh, systems. And we see a number of them listed uh, here as well. And this, in addition to this, they do have the condition monitoring and advanced diagnostic solutions. So that ends the um, program for today. Uh, I'll take any questions, if there are any questions. If not, I'd like to remind you that we do have a nuclear uh, webinar that will be coming up in a few weeks. And every three or four weeks or so, we're now conducting another IIoT and remote O&M uh, webinar. And this is Bob McElvain signing off for today.